name's Karen Barnett. I'm a four-year reserve FO on the 7-3. No windfall here. I am embarrassed to say, because of you people right here, that I am former East. I was on the DC-9, the 737-200, which are parked in the Mojave Desert. And if you'd like to go see where my job is, it is in the Mojave Desert. We didn't take it. We did not take it. In fact, those who are Louise would still be on the street if it were not for this merger. Now, I, my heart did break for those guys, those 86, 7, 8 hires who just had a terrible career. But guess what? They had a terrible career before the merger, and they have a terrible career now, but at least they have a career now because this merger happened. And also, this whole thing of Alpha not working, guess what? It works at Delta. Because when they give something up, they negotiate it, that when things get better, they'll get it back. Your MEC messed up, not Alpha National, okay? Yeah. You are the pilot group. And I'll tell you what, America West has never gotten anything in all the years. You know why? Because they've never been unified. But guess what you guys did? You made us the most unified we have ever been. Woo! why we should believe anything you tell us since you guys agreed to binding arbitration and it didn't go your way and you said well we don't agree to that why should we listen to what you said because we believe it deviates from alpha's merger policy now we captain prater said don't. you don't that captain prater said it doesn't but it, it's run off the tracks that's your opinion if it deviates then you don't know how to read very well it very clearly uh, follows that policy as uh, the federal the judge letter. decided. I don't see how you guys can think that deviates. Mr. Nicolau is not a federal judge. He's a private Well, arbitrator. whatever he is. Agreed upon. It's, it's if, you, if you're right, blood. you I should be able to go to court and get it overturned. That no problem. Go. Do it. Well, no. There is, there is a lawsuit, but that, that is not the way it's done because the arbitration was according to Hoyle, so to speak. Exactly. Oh, so it followed policy. They did. It, it followed procedure. But it's not fair, right? But it's not fair. Like I said, if you think it's wrong, I agree with you. Go to court and get it changed. Go to a legal process. Get it thrown out. This is the legal process. This is the legal process. No problem. And conditions and restrictions, no problem. As long as they meet the five items that the company set forward, right? Okay. Yes, if it doesn't materially, materially impact the company's uh, costs. I think Number five does not contain conditions and restrictions that materially increase costs associated with training or company paid moves. Correct. What you guys want to do is throw up a lifetime fence, lock us over here. We never said that. Yes, yes you did. did. Yeah. Yeah. On your slide, it said lifetime. That, that, was, that was so that you, we put that up there and very clearly articulated afterwards, very clearly, that the whole point of that was to make sure nobody came in on top of you and in fact went on to clearly say that if you wanted to move, we were going to try, so if the few guys, however many there are, there's 10, 20, whatever it is, that want to move out, that that would be extremely difficult, but we wanted to explore that and we wanted to see whether both sides come up with something, and further said it would be difficult and maybe it wouldn't happen. Yeah, but none of, this, none of this was mandated. First of all, there is no policy and none of it was mandated as, some, as a directive to you. It was all to include America West pilots as to how this protection could happen without having a fence, which was acknowledged to be bad for both the company and the pilots, and that was absolutely clear. All right, hang on. You guys say you want to get the pilots together, get some council together to determine fences, yet you've already determined on your own data hire is going to be the way to do it. You haven't waited for us to get included in that. You've already made your decision on that. But you want a fence to lock us up out here, basically denying that merger ever happened. You I want just actually said that wasn't true. <laughs> you, you want us to, with a data hire list, as he said, 90% uh, of our guys get stapled. So you say, oh yeah, you guys can come out, but it's data hire. Yeah. Nobody is going to move out there because they go from our relative seniority, whatever it is here, to reserve. Nobody's moving. Now, Doug is not going to be able to move people around. So he's going to have to force junior assigned people 
to the east if he wants if he wants to move flying. That's costing the company. He's not going to accept this. That, that happens. That happens in any base scenario. That happens before the merger took place. We have moved bases all over the place. That that is not a cost associated it's with with, with, with sure it's, sure it's not. It's, sure it is. No, sir. It's it's exactly. It happens all the time. Exactly. Okay. Here's they've closed bases. They've downsized. Then they make them bigger again. These are company decisions that they make, and and it has nothing whatever to do with the arrangement of the list. And you guys say you want to put this fence up so we keep what we had and you keep what you had. Mm -hmm. Okay. We brought airplanes to this thing. We had 22 on order. I brought a seven-year upgrade. You guys brought a bankrupt company with no exit plan, 1,900 furloughs. You guys going to keep what you had? No. You've already gotten something. So the fence is not keeping what we had and what you had. Yeah. 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 Now here's a scenario.